good morning dear students in our last sessions we were talking about uh, british drama and uh, we discussed about several dramatists of english literature and in the same sequence now we would like to discuss the block number 4th the block number 4th is related with the greatest uh, dramatist of english literature uh, george bernard shaw George Bernard Shaw was a very famous dramatist of English literature who was born on 26th July 1856 and died on 2nd November 1950 was an Irish playwright and a co-founder of the London School of Economics so as a matter of fact George Bernard Shaw is very well uh, known for his uh, you see uh, many plays and particularly he was the co-founder of London School of Economics although his first profitable writing was music and literary criticism in which capacity he wrote many highly articulate pieces of journalism his main talent was for drama and he wrote more than 60 plays uh, he wrote more than 60 plays he was also an essayist novelist and short story writer nearly all his writings address prevailing social situations and uh, but have a bane of comedy which makes their stark themes more palatable issues which engaged saw the tension included education marriage religion government health care and class privilege so uh, my dear friends as a matter of fact he discussed various themes various topics and various ideas uh, in his dramas actually his attention was particularly for the development of education and the issues related with marriage religion government health care class privilege etc he was most angered by what he perceived as the exploitation of the working class so he was not very happy uh, with the exploitation of the working class people and ardent socialist shaw wrote many brochures and speeches for the fabian society he wrote much more and many things for fabian society he became an accomplished orator in the furtherance of its causes which included gaining equal rights for men and women alleviating abuses of the working class so he he was very much inclined he was very much dedicated for the upliftment of the working class people and you see he did uh, a lot in order to Uh, to make their lifestyle very healthy for a short time he was an active uh, person in local politics serving on the london county council so uh, as we were talking my dear friends he was very much related uh, with the uh, with the local people and the, the marginalized classes and the, the poor and the oppressed classes of the society he did a lot for their development and make their life very healthy and comfortable shah was noted for expressing his views in uncompromising language whether on vegetarianism branding his own free vegetarian self a cannibal the development of the human race his own brand of eugenics was driven by encouragement of miscegenation and marrying across class lines or on political question in spite of his own generally liberal views he was not an uncritical supporter of democracy and is even recorded as supporting or at least condoning the dictators of the 1930s so my dear friends as we were talking about his views actually he has been very uncompromising throughout his life he expressed what he liked he did what he liked so uh, actually whatever it was Uh, whether it was the question of vegetarianism whether it was the question of the development of the human race whether it was the question of politics he uh, he did what he liked he expressed his own feelings he expressed his own ideology in the way which he liked so he was very particular about his own views and in which he was very uncompromising in 1898 shaw married Charlotte uh, Townshend a fellow Fabian whom he survived uh, they settled in 
St. Lawrence in a house now called Shah's Corner. So she married with Charlotte and then they settled down at Lawrence uh, in a house particularly that house is known today as Shaw's Corner. Shah died there in, uh, when he was 19 for 94 years old from chronic problems exacerbated by injuries he incurred by falling from a ladder. He is the only person to have been awarded both a Nobel Prize in Literature in 1925. So, my dear friends, it's a very important thing. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1925 and he was awarded with an Oscar also in 1938 for his contributions to literature and for his work on the film Pygmalion, adaptation of his play of the same name, respectively, Shah turned down all other awards and honors, including the over offer of a knighthood. So, uh, I was... Uh, discussing actually, he, he was a very uh, premier figure of English literature who was awarded with an Oscar award and a Nobel Prize for literature also. So uh, his personality was such a grand personality that he turned down all other awards. He was most angered by what he perceived as the exploitation of the working class. An ardent socialist, Shah wrote many brosses and speeches for the Fabian Society. He became an accomplished orator in the furtherance of its causes, which included gaining equal rights for men and women, elevating abuses of the working class, assigning private ownership of productive land, and promoting healthy lifestyles. So, as we were talking, my dear friends, he wanted to infuse a very healthy lifestyle in the lives of working class people. Therefore, he did a lot for their development, for their uh, 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 very good lifestyle, for their economical development, etc. For a short time, he was active in local politics also. As a matter of fact, he served on the London County Council. So, uh, uh, he actually, for a very short time, he was a politician also. Uh, as we were talking, my dear friends, Shah has been very uh, particular regarding his views and his ideology and his thinking and, uh, uh, and his uh, 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 thoughts. As a matter of fact, he expressed his views in the way which he liked actually. He was very uncompromising. In our last slides also, we tried to discuss about it. So he was very uncompromising, whether it is a question of vegetarianism, whether it is a question of uh, his own style of writing, whether it is a question of, uh, you see, political, uh, uh, political issues, or whether it is a question of uh, hum development of the human race. He uh, was uh, always very... Uh, a clear and a candid uh, in his ideas and views. He uh, expressed what he liked. He, he never cared for the, for the other impressions and the other uh, base and their views actually. He had his own uh, temper and uh, you see style of expressing and he did. As we were talking my dear friends, he married in 1898 uh, with a uh, fellow Fabian, uh, 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 one Mr. Uh, one Miss Charlotte, whom he survived. And later on, they, they settled down at Lawrence. There, actually, the particular place, that particular place where they were residing in a house that is known as today Shah's Corner. So, uh, my dear friends, Shah died there when he was 19, 94 year old and uh, you see because he had some chronic problems and he fell down from a ladder also. So that is why he, he actually uh, died. What we were talking, he was the, the, you see, very important person of English literature who was awarded with the Nobel Prize for Literature and he was awarded with the Oscar also. His contributions for the development of English literature, 
particularly the genre of play cannot be uh, 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 cannot be forgotten because he was a very uh, different kind of writer who was related who was attached with the with the masses that is why you see uh, his drama pygmalion that is prescribed in our syllabus also we will uh, study about pygmalion also my dear friends so uh, Pygmalion was taken for film also. So this was his popularity. As far as the plays written by Shaw, you see they were first performed in 1890s. By the end of the decade he was an established playwright. He wrote 63 plays and his output as a novelist, critic, pamphleter, essayist and private correspondent was prodigious. So, uh, as we were talking, my dear friends, he wrote, as a matter of fact, 63 plays. But, as a uh, novelist and a critic and pamphleter, essayist, uh, his, his personality, his output was prodigious. He is known to have written more than 2,50,000 letters. He is known to have written more than 2,50,000 letters along with Fabian Society members Sidney and Matrice Babe and Graham Ballas. Shah founded the London School of Economics and Political Science in 1895 with funding provided by private philanthropy including a bequest of £20,000 from Henry Hunt Hutchinson to Fabian Society. So this is the best service uh, Shah could do for the humanity for England uh, that he co-founded the London School of Economics that is a premier institution of academics and has produced the world class uh, famous uh, financial person and is a premier center in order to study the economics. So uh, one of the libraries at the London School of Economics is named in Shah's honor one of the libraries at the London School of Economics is named in Shah's honor. It contains collections of his papers and photographs. Shah helped to found the left-wing magazine New Statesman in 1913 with the Babes and other prominent members of the Fabian Society. So, uh, along with the members of Fabian Society, my dear friends, he did a lot in order to develop the society, in order to develop the people, in order to develop the academic scene of London. During his later years, Shah enjoyed attending to the uh, grounds at Shah's Corner. At, 19 one, uh, sorry, at 91, he joined the Interplanetary Society for the last three years of his life. He died at the age of 94, of renal failure participated uh, by injuries incurred by falling uh, while pruning a tree. So, uh, uh, during his later years, he started enjoying his life, my dear friends. And in order to enjoy his life, he joined a society that is known as Interplanetary Society. So, but uh, you see, at the age of 94, he died and uh, his essays mixed with those of his wife, Charlotte, Piane Townsend, were scattered along footpaths and around the statue of St. John in their garden. So, uh, as a matter of fact, he was the greatest uh, figure as far as drama is concerned in the modern period, my dear friends. Shah was awarded a Nobel Prize in Literature in 1925 for his contributions to literature. The citation praised his work as marked by both idealism and humanity, its stimulating satire often being infused with a singular poetic beauty. So, he was the premier figure and that is why he was awarded with the Nobel Prize in 1925. Even the jury uh, appreciated his work and they said his work is marked by both idealism and humanity. It's stimulating satire often being infused with a singular poetic beauty. 
Shah wanted to refuse his Nobel Prize outright because he had no desire for public honors. As a matter of fact, Shah was not much interested. Shah was not very much interested in getting the Nobel Prize, my dear friends, because he, he, he did not want to take any public honor or whatsoever, but accepted it as his wife's behest. She considered it a tribute to Ireland because her wife wanted, that is why he, he accepted it. And it was a kind of tribute to Ireland. He did reject the momentary award, requesting it be used to finance translation of fellow playwright August Strindberg's works from Swedish to English. So uh, he, he was a least uh, materialistic person like Leo Tolstoy, and he was very much interested in the academic development, and that is why probably he did not like uh, getting the, the Nobel Prize for Literature, but it was his wife, so because of her actually he accepted and she considered it as a tribute to Ireland. At this time, Prime Minister David George was considering recommending to the King Shah's admission to the Order of Merit, but the place was instead given to J.M. Berry. Shah rejected a knighthood. And you see, uh, 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 he was such a person, in fact, he rejected the knighthood also. And then it was given to J.M. Berry. Shah rejected the knighthood. It was not until 1946 that the government of the day arranged for an informal offer of the order of merit to be made. Shah so declined, replaying that merit in authorship could only be determined by the post-Thomas verdict of history. So, uh, he very clearly uh, uh, decided not to take the order of the merit. This was G.B. Shah, George Bernard Shah. In 1938, Shah was awarded an Oscar for his work on the film Pygmalion that was adapted. You see, for the film, you see, it was an adaptation of his play of the same name. The Academy Award was jointly shared with I, Ian Dariampol. Cicely Cecil Lewis and W.B. Uh, Lipscomb, who had also worked and other things, Shah's script. So, as we were talking, my dear friends, he was the first person of English literature who was awarded by the Nobel Prize and Oscar as well. So, uh, and apart from that, my dear friends, uh, he rejected, he, he did not accept many more awards, including the Order of the Merit he, he never accepted. So this was, you see, the, the personality of G.B. Shaw. Shaw's home, now called Shaw's Corner, in the small village of Aot St. Lawrence, Hartfordshire, is a national trust property open to the public. The place uh, at Lawrence, you see, where he used to live along with his wife, where Shaw used to live along with his wife, this has become a public property these days, and it is open to, you see, it is a, it is a uh, national trust property, my dear friends, but it is open for the public. They can come and see the things. The Shaw Theatre, uh, Austin Road, London, opened in 1971, was named in his owner. Near its entrance, opposite the New British, uh, uh, opposite the New British Library, a contemporary statue of St. John, commemorates Shah as author of that play. So St. John was the play, was written by G.B. Uh, Shaw. So uh, you see, uh, that is the location of that place. The Shaw Festival, <coughs> an annual theater festival in Niagara on the Lake Ontario, Canada, began as an eight-week run of uh, Don Juan in Hell as the long third act dream sequence of man and superman is called when he stays alone. And Candida in 16, sorry, in 1962 and has grown into an annual festival with over 800 performances a year dedicated to producing the works of Shah and his contemporaries. The portrait of George Bernard Shah located at Niagara on the Lake was commissioned by hostelier C. by Lai and sculpted by Dr. Elizabeth Bradford Holbrook. 
CM 1913-2009. So, my dear friends, as we were talking, that uh, he had a, a versatile personality and many things are organized in his honor. In fact, the festivals are, uh, are on organized in his honor and the different things also organized and celebrated in his honor. G.B. Shaw really was a great man who did a lot for the development and for the betterment of English literature. Now we come uh, uh, to the Pygmalion. This is the, the play that is prescribed in our syllabus and we would like to understand after uh, understanding something about George Bernard Shaw who was the writer of Pygmalion. Now we would like to understand about Pygmalion. Pygmalion is a play by G.B. Shaw named after a Greek mythological character. It was first presented on stage to the public in 1912. Very important thing, you see, uh, it is named after a Greek mythological character. It was first presented on stage on the public in 1912. Professor of phonetics, Henry Higgins makes a bet that he can train a bad raggled cockney flower girl, Eliza Doolittle, to pass for a duchess at an ambassador's garden party by teaching her to assume a veneer of gentility. The most important element of which he believes in impassable speech. The play is a sharp lampoon of the rigid British class system of the day and a commentary on women's independence. So, as a matter of fact, it is, it is you see, uh, a kind of uh, a kind of an argument from a professor of phonetics uh, who says that he can teach any girl actually and he chooses one Eliza Doolittle and says that he she can be taught in a perfect manner so as a matter of fact it is a sharp lampoon my dear friends of the rigid British class system of the day and the commentary on women's independence it as a matter of fact talks about women's independence in ancient Greek mythology, Pygmalion fell in love with one of his sculptors, which then came to life. The general idea of that myth was a popular subject for Victorian era English playwrights, including one of Shah's influences. W.S. Gilbert, who wrote a successful play based on the story called Pygmalion and Galatea, first presented in 1871, Shaw also would have been familiar with the burlesque version. Galatea or Pygmalion reserved. Saw's play has been adapted numerous times, most notably as the musical My Fair Lady and the film of that name. So, uh, as we were talking, actually, this is a this the story is based on the uh, the uh, Greek myth, actually, and uh, there Pygmalion fell in love uh, uh, with one of his sculptures, and uh, uh, that sculpture later on came into life. Shaw mentioned that the character of Professor Henry Higgins was inspired by several British professors of phonetics like Alexander Maliville Bell, Alexander Ellis, Tito, but above all Henry Sweet. So, as a matter of fact, the character of Henry Higgins is inspired by many other characters. Shaw wrote the play in the spring of 1912 and read it to famed actress Mrs. Patrick Campbell in June. She came on board almost immediately, but her mild, nervous breakdown and its doctor and force uh, which led to a quasi-romantic intrigue with Shah, contributed to the delay of a London production. Pygmalion premiered at the Hofburg Theatre in Vienna on October 16, 1913, in a German translation by Shah's Viennese literary uh, agent and actor Light, Siegfried uh, Trevis. Its first New York production opened March 24, 1914, at the German language Irving Place Theater. It opened in London April 11, 1914, at Sir Herbert Beerbohm Trees, His Majesty's Theater, star, starred Mrs. Campbell as Eliza and Tree as Higgins, running for 118 performances. Shah directed the actors through tempestuous rehearsals open punctuated by at least one of the two storming out of the theater in a rage. So, uh, this was about Pygmalion and the background of it.
first American publication, Everybody's Magazine, uh, that was on November 1914. Sa was conscious of the difficulties involved in staging a complete representation of the play, acknowledging in a note for technician uh, that such a thing would only be possible on the cinema screen or on stages furnished uh, with exceptionally elaborate machinery. He marked some scenes as candidates for omission, if necessary. Of these, a short scene at the end of Act 1, in which Eliza goes home, and a scene in Act 2, in which Eliza is unwilling to undress for her bath, are not described here. The others are the scene at the embassy wall in Act 3, and the scene with Eliza and Freddy in Act 4. Neither the Gutenberg edition referenced throughout the space nor the wiki source text linked below contain these sequences. Pygmalion was the most broadly appealing of all Shaw's plays, but popular audiences looking for pleasant entertainment with big stars in a best end venue wanted a happy ending for the characters they liked so well, as did some critics. During the 1914 run to Shaw's exasperation, but not to his surprise, he sought to sweeten Shaw's ending to please himself and his record houses. Shah returned for the hundredth performance and watched Higgins standing at the window, toss a banquet down to Eliza. My ending makes money. You ought to be grateful. Protested free, your ending is damnable. You ought to be sought. Shah remained sufficiently irritated to add a postscript essay, What Happened Afterwards, to the 1916 print edition for inclusion with subsequent editions in which he explained precisely why it was impossible for the story to end with Higgins and Eliza getting married. He continued to protect the plays and Eliza's integrity by protecting the last scene for at least some performances during the 1920 revival. Sa adjusted the ending in a way that underscored the Shavian message. In an undated note to Mrs. Campbell, he wrote, when Eliza emancipates herself, when Galatia comes to life, she must not relapse. She must retain her pride and triumph to the end. When Higgins takes your arm on consort battleship, you must instantly throw him off with implacable pride. And this is the note until the final by them yourself. He will go out on the balcony to watch your departure, come back triumphantly into the room, exclaim, Galatia, meaning that the statue has come to life at last and cut in, thus he gets the last word and you get it too. So, my dear friends, as we were talking, you see, uh, this is all about uh, uh, a kind of uh, confidence uh, uh, of a, a professor of phonetics who, take, uh, who takes Eliza Doolittle uh, in order to teach her that and she can be compared with anybody. So Pygmalion, that the, the main theme actually as we were talking initially, you see the character Pygmalion is very well impressed by the uh, Greek mythology and the Greek characters and all. But apart from that, uh, 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 Pygmalion, the drama by G. V. Saw, it expresses the, the, the equalness of uh, uh, women you see in the contemporary society. And uh, uh, it is also because of, uh, you see, uh, Professor Higgins who, who tried and uh, you see there are several mistakes by, uh, the, from the side of Eliza Doolittle but she improved and improved and improved. So uh, this is about the equal rights of men and women and this is all about, you see, the, uh, the, the equalness and equality that can be experienced. And in his whole life, uh, George Bernard Shaw was favoring it actually. He did it for the development of the, uh, you see, the classes and uh, the social stratas of uh, London and England. So the same social transformation he, he wants to talk, he wants to uh, make it happen in the society through his works and, uh, you see, plays. So thank you, my dear friends. You must have got the point about it.